Welcome to Community Conversations. We are delighted to be back after a brief summer hiatus. I'm your host, Hallie Ammons, and as the Assistant Director of Government and Community Relations at Villanova University, I am so happy to bring you the extraordinary people making an impact on our campus community and beyond. Today, we will be discussing the arts at Villanova, and I will be speaking with Jenny Castillo, Curator of the University Art Collection and Gallery Director. Welcome, Jenny. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's great to be here. Oh, my pleasure. Our pleasure. Thank you. Um, I don't know that a lot of folks may even know that the university has an art gallery. So first, I'd love to have you talk a little bit about the history and the mission of the gallery. Sure. Um, so I just recently joined about a year ago. Um, before, uh, before me was um, Father Richard um, Canuli, who had... I don't know, big shoes to fill, that's for sure. He was with the university for a long time, started the gallery. Um, he also taught classes and everything else. So I'm still trying to kind of, I'm, I'm not gonna fit in those shoes, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> but he had some really great um, exhibitions up and things like that. And when I started, um, it was kind of a goal of mine to make sure that the students knew the gallery existed. Um, so we're located like right in the Connolly building, which is the student union building. And it really kind of broke my heart that a lot of students hadn't even known that it was there. Um, so a lot of my outreach for the past year has been more social media based. And, um, you know, I even started a TikTok account and oh, God help me, um, <laughs> Facebook and everything else. Um, so a lot of the focus has been more getting students in the door. So this summer we had a really great renovation. Um, so new kind of hardwood floors and very clean walls and kind of elevating the status of the gallery. Um, but another goal is just to make it feel accessible mm -hmm. to students and the, the community. Um, I feel like art can sometimes be a little bit not scary, but intimidating. Mm -hmm. um, and those spaces feel intimidating because mm -hmm. they're very clean, very white walls. Um, so for students, I want to have, you know, chairs and places for them to bring in their laptops and their coffees. And, you know, my main goal is if there's like an engineering student or a nursing student who like looks up and is like, huh, mm -hmm. good. That's all I need, right? Um, not even, wow, I love that. Although that would be like extra points, right? <laughs> so the mission basically is to just, um, we, we collect a lot of works from mainline artists and Philadelphia-based artists, a lot of um, PAFA grads and things like that. Um, so a lot of the donations that we get are based in this area. Um, but a lot of it also goes internationally. We have Renaissance pictures, we have, you know, American portraits, we have a wide range of things. That's really fascinating. And something that when I started at Villanova, I did not know, yeah. and is uh, just a really incredible uh, part of the culture of campus. Yes. And I feel like the art gallery, and I've seen the renovation, it looks amazing, it's gorgeous. Thank you. And it's such a great, it's a little bit of a hidden gem. Lots of folks yeah. understand yeah. that there's an arts tradition at Villanova. We have the wonderful Performing Arts Center, yeah. which is fantastic. And I really am so excited for neighbors to know what is on campus and to, to invite them into that space. And the fact that it's it's free, um, it's open all the time because the Connolly is open until like midnight. Mm -hmm. uh, usually we close the gallery, I think about 7 p.m., but it's open on weekends. It's a nice place to like bring kids, grandkids, you know. Um, and the public has access during, during all of the opening, opening hours. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, they could just park right in, I think it's called M2, mm -hmm. but you know, like the sack garage. Mm -hmm. um, and then they can just walk right in. Um, the person at the gate at Ithan mm -hmm. Avenue just will point the direction. That's, That's wonderful. wonderful. That's, yeah. And I, I feel, feel like, like that may be, you know, really important for our neighbors to understand how accessible. Yeah. this space is to them as well. And being on campus, especially this time of year, is a really great thing. The, the energy is really wonderful. Um, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about some of the previous exhibits uh, that, that you have overseen. Sure. Even feel free to talk about a little bit about your own uh, professional history, about sure, how you came yeah. to Villanova. I, I think that folks would love to hear about that. Um, so yeah, if you want to talk about some of the things that, that you have uh, brought to the gallery so far. Sure, yeah. Um, so I started um, kind of the art world, in the art world, um, as a 
a very low man on the totem pole, so to speak, um, an intern at um, a gallery on the Upper East Side. And then I worked my way up to director there um, and Upper East Side of Manhattan, sorry. Uh, <laughs> and I was there for 10 years. Um, so I learned a lot about what to do, what not to do, um, what works and what doesn't, what paintings play together and what shouldn't stay on the same walls. Um, and then after that, I worked for an art technology startup company called ArtBank, um, which can provide value of artwork. So um, you take a picture with your phone and it does the fair market value of what it's worth if it's something that's bought and sold in the secondary market. So my background is very varied and it's always been wearing many hats, mm -hmm. which is why like when this job came up to be around students and have that energy that you mentioned, mm -hmm. um, in addition to being able to do like the marketing and budget. And, you know, it's a, it's a strong army of one, yeah. um, <laughs> I'd like to think. Um, so that's basically my background. And um, since I've been here, we've had a few, a few exhibitions. Mm -hmm. um, my first one was um, Modern Masters Works on Paper. Mm -hmm. um, so as you mentioned, a lot of people don't know, we have about almost 10,000 works of art in our collection um, and a lot of great works on paper uh, by what I would consider modern masters, like blue chip, amazing artists. Um, so that was my first show is I, I kind of got a selection of those. Um, and then uh, since then we've done a student art show. Um, last spring we brought um, a pre-Reformation Irish chalice. I don't know if you got a chance to see that. It was really, yeah. really something else. It's really yeah. cool. And then we put it in, I put it in conversation with um, a contemporary artist who works in New York in like mm -hmm. fiber arts. Um, okay. So are these like prayer banners. Mm -hmm. um, so even if some people don't really understand or can appreciate contemporary art, what I'm really trying to do is like, put, as I said, is make it more accessible, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, kind of put it in a context, especially for an educational standpoint. like. Art has taught but, us uh, so, so much, much for, for so many years. It's, it's always been a didactic right. way. Okay. So right. I figured, you know, Villanova is a great place to do that. <laughs> this is the perfect context. Yeah. You're sort of bringing those two worlds together. Yeah. One thing I really love about the gallery is not only its accessibility and its openness to the public, that also that the openings and the receptions mm -hmm. um, and time with the artists are also available to the public. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about what that looks like and, and when you open a new exhibit, what happens and what can the public expect? Sure. The last one we had was called Outcry, um, which is a very intense but beautiful exhibition. Um, Whitney Bradshaw is a Chicago-based photographer and she takes portraits of women screaming. Mm -hmm. um, so it was mostly in um, connection to the Me Too movement. Um, and it gives women a space, like she would hold these scream sessions and it gives women a space to actually physically scream, um, which a lot of women are told, you know, to be silent, be quiet for years and years and years. Um, some people even have those dreams, those reoccurring dreams where you can't talk and you can't scream. Um, so when we had her opening, she actually did a Q and A with one of the grad students on campus, who's a women's studies major. Um, and in theater. Um, so I think those kind of conversations are really important um, because it's not just an artist talking about their work, they're answering questions and they're engaging with what we want to know or what students are curious about. Um, after the, our next one is um, Cole Sternberg. Mm -hmm. It's called Thirsty While Drowning. Um, I think the community is going to have a different view of that one because mm -hmm. it's going to be actually um, large scale, scale murals on the outsides of right. some of our buildings. Um, so driving down Lancaster Avenue, uh, you might see it. <laughs> I personally, I can't wait yeah. for that exhibit. And just to touch back on the outcry exhibit, I did get a chance to see that. It really was so powerful. Yeah. And it really does, you know, I feel like a lot of folks, their perception of art galleries and art is that these are things that happen in museums and with people who create them that are no longer available to us. Sure. And it's so wonderful to have the creators come in, 
speak to their work, speak to the community, create that catharsis um, that I think is what art gives us in so many ways. Um, and I do want to talk about Cole Sternberg because I know he, I understand he has a Villanova connection. Yeah, he graduated from um, the School of Business, I believe, in 2001. Um, and so somebody like Cole um, is really interesting to me too because he went on so many different paths. And for at least students at Villanova, I think it's important for them to know that they don't have to stay in this one box, this one area. Um, yes, you can be an expert in that, but you can do other things with it too, right? So he would paint in his, um, I don't remember the South um, Campus housing that he told me he was in, but mm -hmm. you know, as a freshman, and he would be painting in his, his dorm room, um, but he was taking business classes because mm -hmm. that's what he did, you know? And then after that, he studied law and he was in DC, and now he's a full-time artist in California. So I think it's really great for students to actually hear like yeah. that path is right. possible. And you know, each step brings you somewhere different. Right, that's really remarkable, especially when you think about business students or law students yeah. having a very uh, sort of prescribed path laid out before them. So you mentioned that there uh, will be uh, large scale murals yeah. on view. Mm -hmm. uh, will there be uh, artwork pieces in the gallery itself? And, and what, um, what what is Cole Sternberg's uh, focus? What are what are people going to be seeing? Sure. Uh, yeah, his um, he's mainly having a conversation about sustainability and mm -hmm. what our relationship is with the earth, right? And so on the outside of Jake Nevin Field House will be like kind of a, a watery sunset mm -hmm. essentially. And it looks like the earth is like tilted mm -hmm. on its axis. Um, it's the same um, outside of VC, uh, the old black box theater mm -hmm. um, will look like the whole first floor is underwater. Uh, so it should be really powerful. Mm -hmm. um, the nice part about it too is that it's really kind of changing the environment mm -hmm. of Villanova mm -hmm. as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, like what I said with um, like an engineering student sitting in mm -hmm. the gallery and looking up and being like, huh, um, <laughs> you know, this is on a wide right. scale, <laughs> right? All day long. And for yeah. folks, for our neighbors, Vasey Hall is on campus. Yes, yeah. so that's on main campus right, right across from Connolly Center. Mm -hmm. um, so Vasey, the outside of the, the windows, they were boarded up because it used to be a black box. Mm -hmm. So right now it's just plain white windows. So mm -hmm. I think it'll make a really strong impact. Absolutely. Yeah. And when um, when can folks expect to start seeing these? Is there a, a opening date or a yeah. time a timeline, time sure. range? Sure. Um, next week, oh, actually. That's exciting. I mean, logistically mm -hmm. speaking, it's been a little crazy. <laughs> um, I've tried to figure it out uh, with, um, what is it called? Uh, I think it's direct applied vinyl, right? Oh. And so I was thinking that we could just do little squares on the outside of Jake Nevin mm -hmm. Fieldhouse and like I could just peel it off and stick one on. But there's 608 pieces of glass on the Jake Nevin Fieldhouse. So we decided to to not go in that direction. So this is something I would not have thought about the actual logistics. I'm like, oh yeah, a mural, great, yeah. put it up there. But that's fascinating. So yeah. how? How is that happening? How is the mural being, because it's not going to be permanent, obviously. No, um, but it'll be up for, hopefully, for a little bit. Oh, I mean, great. the exhibition goes until January 18th. Great. Um, but hopefully if the community likes it, we could leave it up a little longer. Uh, right now we're having it printed on this kind of um, see-through mesh. Um, so mm. it's almost like a banner mm -hmm. with like grommets. Mm -hmm. um, but then, then I'm going to have to paint the grommets so that it blends in with the rest of it. And oh, wow. um, thankfully, the Villanova facilities team and graphic services have been like instrumental in helping me figure this out because I was trying to get... Um, certified to go up in one of those like big cherry picker, oh, like 90 right, foot like right, truck lifts. Right. And that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> um, not for my fear of heights, but only because maintenance was like, I don't think you should do that. <laughs> but a testament to your commitment. Well, that's, that's definitely there. <laughs> that's, I mean, I'm so excited to see that. And I, it's just, I, I, be I'll even be interested to see how it is installed. Yeah. That'll be really you'll, you'll fascinating. <laughs> That'll be really, really great. And once the artist um when when the opening is, oh, yeah. um happy to uh, we would love to be able to invite our neighbors. How can neighbors um 
stay connected to the gallery. Sure. Um, so uh, Facebook, um, Instagram, social media. Um, I update the website a lot, um, artgallery.villanova.edu. Um, so they could always find information there. And my phone number is on there as well. It goes directly to me. Um, and it forwards to my cell phone if I'm not in my office. So um, the community is more than welcome to contact me anytime about anything. Um, my door is always open. Even if they want me to walk them through the gallery as like a personal tour, I'm always happy to do something like that as time allows in between mm -hmm. things. So um, oh, I realized I didn't answer your question about the gallery. Oh, so let's, can let's I, can go I revert back. back? Of course, um, of course. So for Cole's work that'll be hanging in the gallery, um, they're going to be contemporary plein air paintings. Mm -hmm. um, so basically he does these very large scale um, paintings and then he drags them through the Pacific Ocean. Um, so it kind of is takes... that what plain air refers to? Usually it means like painting outside. Okay. Um, uh, but usually for this, it's like it's just a whole different wow. thing. So it takes all the brush strokes out of it mm -hmm. and changes just the way it looks, you know? Yeah. Um, so I would have, it probably just changed the whole composition. That's exactly. I didn't realize yeah. that was part of his technique, dragging it through the Pacific Ocean. Yeah. Which I think is just like, yeah. it's so different. That is very, very different. That is, yeah. and, and he, well, and he's, of course, a resident of California, so he's got yes. access to the Pacific yes. Ocean. Exactly. <laughs> that is fascinating. I cannot wait to see, and they're a large scale. Yeah, is that, yeah they're about, about like, seven, a lot of them are about 70 inches, wow. which is, you know, size of a small human. That'll be really <laughs> impressive to see. And the artist will be here for the opening when yeah. that occurs, and we'll definitely let our community know. Yeah. Um, that'll be a fascinating. Uh, a discussion. Yeah, I would love to him. have them. It's um, November 3rd from 4 to 6. Great. So and I tried to hit like a little after work, a mm -hmm. little before work for those of you who want to leave early. Or... <laughs> that's right. I, that's, I, I love that time personally. I think it's a great time. Um, and it's a, it'll be a really nice time to uh, enjoy campus too, especially yeah. in the fall. Um, but that will be such a fascinating uh, discussion. I know you mentioned how you get exhibits and you exhibits come from the community often, from the local community or from Villanova's own collection. Mm -hmm. Let's say there are artists out there who want to contact you about potentially requesting an exhibit. Can someone do that? Is that oh, yeah. something? That, how does that work? Um, that's actually, actually how I found Lori Wool, who is part of our, um, um, that, that one I told you about with the uh, chalice, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, she had contacted me through email. Um, so art gallery at villanova.edu. Um, anyone who is a practicing artist or, or knows somebody, has seen something in a gallery, who thinks that it would be a great exhibition to bring. We usually do um, exhibitions a few years in advance mm -hmm. if we can. Mm -hmm. um, so it might be something that ends up on a schedule a little bit further down the road, oh. but I'm always open to hearing what kind of talent is out there, or, um, especially if it's a community member and things like that. So. That's excellent. I, yeah. I feel like we have such a rich community in, in this area. There's so it. much here. I so. Know. Yeah, I have so many contacts I still need to make with like the Wayne Art Center mm -hmm. and, you know, I passed it on the drive and I was mm -hmm. like, oh, note to self, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, there are fantastic resources and just so many um, uh, creative folks that are uh, in our in our community. We're so lucky to have them. Um, the other side of that, let's say I'm not an artist myself, but perhaps I've amassed a wonderful art collection that I would like to give to to Villanova. Well, that's very generous of you. We will happily accept that. Can I donate my art to, to Villanova's art collection if I if I would like to? Yes. And how do I do that? Yes. And most of the things we do have um, are gifts from the community. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few donors that have given generously over the years. Um, basically, uh, you just reach out to me and provide some information on the works. Um, we're really, as I mentioned, like trying to get to more of like the mainline art community or Philadelphia, trying to stay within this area mm -hmm. to kind of build a collection that speaks more to art communities in general, right? right. Um, I am really looking for a lot of like blue chip is what we call mm -hmm. blue chip artists. So like, um, you know, a little bit more like higher up on, on the scale of the secondary market, things okay. that sell a little bit more mm -hmm. that are bought and sold at auctions and things mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. um, just to, to make it a stronger collection. But sure. um, we appreciate any kind of any kind of gift um, financially too. Um, I know you can always go on the, uh, mm -hmm. Forget their office name, but there's a website on Villanova. 
Thank you. Yes. Yep. <laughs> um, you could always go on Advancement's website and say that it's for the art gallery and donate that way too. Oh, that's, that's great. great. So there are a variety yeah. of ways um, folks can uh, folks can visit the gallery. They can donate their their resources to the gallery. Um, however, that looks if they so choose. Um, you know, from my standpoint as a community relations director, I just I love that we have. Uh, so many ways for our community to engage with Villanova um, th via the arts, via, of course, our athletics programs. Uh, it was special events that we hold on campus. Um, but, you know, I think the arts and, and the culture aspect is a really uh, special uh, part of our community yeah. that, you know, we'd love to make sure that folks are, are aware of. Yeah. And if there's ever a way that um, I can reach out better to the community. I'm always willing to hear that too. So if people are missing shows and they don't know why, you know, we have a mailing list, sign up on the website, right, um, right. email and physical postcards that you can get in the mail, things like that. So the more communication, I think the better, always. Excellent, excellent, great. And, you know, I think something, uh, our conversation today, hopefully we'll bring this to, to more folks and then they'll be reaching out or they're just taking a walk over. Those are all my questions, but I wanted to make sure that you ha had an opportunity to bring up anything uh, before we say goodbye for today. I'm just so excited and uh, for all the good things that are coming, so happy you're able to, to join me today. And if there's anything, any final thoughts you'd like to share? Me too. I just feel like I've been talking for so long. I don't know. <laughs> well, this was a really, really wonderful conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Once again, this is Jenny Castillo. She is the curator of the University Art Collection and Gallery Director at Villanova University. For more information on all of the great things happening at Villanova and for ways to get involved, please visit www.villanova.edu slash neighbors.